Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'll try to be fairly brief as well and leave as much time as possible for the, the panel session. I'd like to start by just putting uh, things in context in terms of the current regulatory framework um, with respect to money market funds. Then I'll say a little bit about what uh, ESMA and its predecessor, uh, CESAR, have already done in this area. Uh, and I'll finish with a few remarks uh, on the most recent and current initiatives in relation to, to money market funds. Before I do that, and it, I prefer not to do this, but I'm kind of obliged to in the case that we're on the record here. We um, are on the record, yes. These, these are my, uh, to the extent that I talk about any of the current initiatives, the Commission proposal, these are purely personal views. Um, ESMA doesn't have a formal position yet uh, on uh, the money market fund regulation. Um, but of course the time will come uh, probably quite soon when we have to start making decisions uh, on that regulation. So just first of all, I think it's worth bearing in mind that money market funds clearly are investment funds and we have quite a lot of harmonized and detailed regulation in the European Union in, in the case of investment funds. We have the uses directive and most of money market funds are subject to the uses directive. Uh, that's been in place since 1985. It's been through a number of um, iterations and revisions since then and it's now one of the most detailed uh, sets of regulation that we have in the EU in terms of product regulation. You also have detailed and uh, quite heavy rules on risk management, liquidity, conduct of business rules uh, and other things. Um, the use its directive at level one uh, is of course supplemented by a number of level two directives and regulations and by an extensive set of guidelines developed by, by ESMA. Um, of course, money market funds do not necessarily have to be captured by USITS. They may also be um, under the scope of the AIFMD, the Return to Investment Fund Managers Directive. Uh, so as of 22nd of July of last year, um, there is, again, a harmonized regulatory framework that, that will apply to the managers of those money market funds that were not captured by, by USITS. So I think we just have to bear that in mind. We're not starting from scratch when it comes to uh, money market fund regulation, but of course, um, a number of additional risks uh, have been identified that would indeed merit uh, further and more targeted action by legislators and regulators. The second area I wanted to, to just touch on briefly um, are the guidelines that ESMA's predecessor, CESAR, issued in May 2010 as the guidelines on a common de definition of money market funds in Europe. Um, so already before the current debates, uh, international and European level, quite a lot of work had been done uh, to harmonize the regulatory framework for money market funds. And we did that from an investor protection perspective, um, having seen from the crisis and certain specific cases that <clears throat> things had been bought by money market funds, certain investments which the average investor probably wouldn't have expected to be in that type of fund. So um, we, we decided to take action there. And also from a more systemic uh, perspective, because we were already aware at that time of the run risk and the liquidity risk that uh, has been talked about much more in recent times. And so by increasing um, and strengthening the rules on the eligible investments for these funds, for the credit quality of the instruments into which they can invest and, and other things, uh, we could already strengthen um, the safeguards. So those guidelines um, already address quite a lot of the issues that were uh, identified, for example, by IOSCO in its report of 2012, be it on the eligible investments, on uh, the limits on maturity and liquidity, the credit quality that I mentioned. Um, we also um, introduced for the first time this idea of two categories of funds, short-term money market funds versus money market funds. Um, and in that context, uh, already in, in, at that time, we tried to put in place some kind of uh, safeguard in relation to the use of amortized cost and of uh, constant net asset value. Um, more specifically, we said that if you, are, if you want to have a constant net asset value, you can only be a, a short-term money market fund, um, considering that it wouldn't be appropriate for the, the other category. Um, and we emphasized the importance when the, there is an amortized cost valuation method 
of making sure that there's not too much of a discrepancy between the value placed using that method and the value arrived at uh, based on a market value. And if there, are a, if there was to be a material discrepancy, then uh, something should be done by, by the manager. Um, finally, um, just talking about some of the recent and um, current initiatives on money market funds. So I'm, I touched on the IOSCO work. We all know about the important work done by the ESRB. Um, we have lots of discussions that we've seen in the US that have led to certain proposals by the SEC, um, and most recently the, the Commission proposal for a regulation. A few remarks on, on the f uh, some of the key points from an ESMA perspective. Um, obviously the Commission proposal didn't foresee a supervision role for ESMA, but that's something that's come up in the European Parliament discussions. It's obviously very um, heartening to be given that sort of confidence by uh, the, the Parliament that ESMA should have a role there. Um, just a couple of things maybe that should be borne in mind in those discussions. It's something we always say uh, when we're uh, potentially going to be given new powers. We need to have the resource to do that. I don't know if you're aware, but ESMA remains a relatively small authority. We're about 130, 140 people now covering all of the securities markets files. Um, so if we're going to be given a role, uh, and there are good arguments for that on supervision of certain money market funds, that would have to be backed up uh, with the necessary resource in terms of budget and headcount. Um, on the, the CNAV and, and the capital buffer, um, as I said, I mean, there's no specific or formal ESMA position on, on that at the moment. What I would say just personally is that if uh, indeed we're going to put in place that buffer, it needs to be um, done over a certain period of time to allow the, the managers and uh, industry and investors to adapt. And at the same time, if all the evidence shows that the buffer is in fact um, going to make it um, uneconomic to have that kind of fund, then probably it's more transparent and straightforward simply to say, well, let's get rid of that kind of fund. Um, but I think there are a lot of debates that have to go on there and no doubt the correct percentage for the buffer will be subject to lots of exchanges within the, the Council and the Parliament. Um, another area where I think, again, personal view, but I think the Commission did a good job is on the treatment of external credit ratings in the, um, uh, in the proposal, at least as far as reliance on ratings by the managers are concerned, um, where they came up with quite a good compromise, allowing managers to uh, take account of a rating but not being bound uh, by that rating and in line with the uh, many discussions recently on the use of ratings, you know, encouraging a much stronger and more detailed internal rating process. Um, on the other hand, the, the issue of prohibiting a fund from asking for an external rating, I think there are some, some risks there. We need to think carefully about the consequences that that could have on uh, the market, the information that will be available to investors, and what, um, what investment decisions they might make in the absence of having um, an external rating for a, for a money market fund. And finally, um, I think a, a welcome development, and this is very much in line with other pieces of securities market legislation we've seen recently, inclu including the FMD, there will be extensive reporting of information to uh, ESMA on a systematic basis. Uh, and I think that's very much in line with the idea that ESMA, at least in the securities market sphere, is becoming a, a sort of centralizing entity for reporting data. So that, that was just a quick overview of um, what has already been done and put in place and some uh, initial views on the current proposals. And as ESMA, we're now looking forward to the outcome of the political discussions and, and taking up our role once the legislation is in place.